Hello, welcome to episode okay, so two. Here's our blanket. And Excellent. Asymmetrical twin. Dropping and sinking. Uh, uh, notice how the. So just notice. Joining us for the second episode of next week. So. Namaste. Hello and welcome to episode 35 of Namaste Yoga. I'm here with my friend Carrie and repeat returnee to Namaste Yoga. And Carrie and I are flying solo today. We actually we actually set everything up by ourselves. Our cameraman is stuck in traffic. It's a long weekend here in Canada and he couldn't get back here in time. So we're we're actually doing everything all by ourselves. Isn't that pretty incredible? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without Carrie. So I'm just feeling like really grateful and um, like, you know, really pleased and proud of myself for getting everything set up. So yeah, that's, that's where we're at. So um, today we're continuing our series of classes around um, the yamas and the niyamas. And we've done two classes already. We did a class, um, an episode, so we're on 35, 34, episode 33, we started that series, the 10 class series on the yamas and the niyamas um, with the first yama, that, and they're the ethical principles for yoga. And the first series was on ahimsa, which is um, nonviolence or compassion and kindness. And then last week we did a class on um, um, satya, which is truthfulness. And then this week we're moving along to the third yama, which is ashteya, and that means non-stealing. So do you want to have a lie down? You can do shavasana and you can all uh, rest back in shavasana or you can do your um, shavasana seated, it's totally up to you. So um, as you rest back, we're going to just um, tune in to ashteya and what it means for us. and. I know the first time, you know, actually I've read the Yamas and the Niyamas lots of times and this one I always kind of just gloss over. I think, you know, I, I, I don't steal, so I don't think there's a lot here for me. <laughs> but I started to do a little more research uh, when I was planning this class and um, there's a lot of subtle forms of stealing that we do. Um, that we all do, I'm guilty of as well, throughout the day. So I just wanted to, it's just like non-violence, right? Most of us, when we first hear that, we think, well, you know, I'm not a violent person. Um, and same thing, I don't steal. But there are these more subtle levels um, that we can work with these yamas, for sure. So Nikolai Bachman, he points out that uh, one of the things that we can watch if we want to cultivate ashteya is our conversations. and. And I know, now that I've brought a lot of awareness to this, I'm totally aware of this, that um, when we interrupt in a conversation, we're stealing. We're stealing from that other person's opportunity to communicate themselves. Um, he also talks about taking credit for somebody else's ideas or efforts, that being a form of stealing. And, you know, um, all week long as I've been practicing and teaching this in class, People, it's like everybody's like, oh yeah, you know, they they know that and recognize that from their work environments. It's a very common place where that happens, I think. Nichala Joy Davies, she talks about um, recognizing your um, timeliness. So when we're not on time for another person, that's stealing their time. And so just to watch for uh, being on time. And then um, Michael Stone, he talks about the ways that we steal by taking up more space than we need, um, either physically or psychically. And, you know, I think especially as women, we put a lot of effort into not taking up too much space physically. Um, but let's look at the broader picture of how much space we take up physically on the earth, on the planet, in terms of your, your footprint, your environmental footprint. So I think a lot of us uh, do live in houses bigger than what we need. Um, 
and we drive bigger cars than we need. We take up more space and we use more of the re Earth's resources than we need. And I think this is a real cultural thing around Ashtaya, that we've been stealing from the Earth for a long time. Um, and that is why we're out of balance so much right now. And we'll be talking about balance next week with Brahmacharya. And then the other way that Michael Stone talks about is taking up too much space psychically. And we've all been in relationships where the there isn't a balance between the two. There isn't a give and take where one person is taking up way more space psychically. And and that can be really uncomfortable. You know, it just makes the person that doesn't isn't getting their space psychically want to retreat. So these are, you know, just some really good examples, I thought, of the way that we can... Um, practice Ashtaya in our day-to-day -day lives. So on the other end of the spectrum of Ashtaya, of not stealing or not taking from others, um, we find generosity. And this is the way we ultimately practice Ashtaya, is by being generous without expecting things in return. And again, I think a lot of us, especially uh, women, again, we tend to be so much the caregivers in our culture that there that it can become difficult to be generous and uh, I think probably one of the things that you can possibly reflect on in your practice is can I be generous with myself because when we're generous with ourselves then our cup is overflowing and it's easy there's too much it's easy to give so Nichala Joy Devi, she translates this verse on Ashtaya as abiding in generosity and honesty, material and spiritual prosperity is bestowed. And I think that is such a great way of describing it. Now I'm going to share a poem with you. It's from my most favorite book right now. It's called Love Poems from God, 12 Sacred Voices from the East and West by Daniel Ladinsky. And I think this poem really speaks to a really beautiful um, expression of Ashtaya, of, of generosity. It's called, The Sun Never Says. Even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights the whole world. So as you're resting back in Shavasana, just start to become aware of your breath and connect with your breath as generous. You know, each breath you take in feeds all the cells of your body with oxygen. Each breath is life-affirming, life-giving. There really isn't anything more generous that you can experience on this planet than your breath. And each breath that you release takes toxins away from your body. And each breath that you let out of your body is a process of purification. So just that in itself is such a miracle. The way the breath nourishes the body and cleanses the body with every inhale and exhale. And perhaps you can start to tune into and feel that sense of generosity just as you're breathing. <laughs> 